This is all for the video. Something obviously. about matching underwear that just makes you feel great. It does. It does make you feel great. I agree. Speaking of things that make you feel great, today we're going to talk about emergency self care. Woo! For when everything's gone wrong. Yay! You feel like poo, but you're here, and we're going to help. Even poo gets stuck. So, Rosianna and I are both 100% into self care. Mm, oh yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's also very necessary. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing it because we love it. Well, though we do love so, it. Sometimes I, I've grown to love it. I have yeah. to say, initially it felt like more work than it. I mean, it's always work, but it felt like more work at the start when I started thinking about it as self care than it does now. As, but it can be light. Yeah, exactly. And there can be light, especially when you have a couple of tips and tricks. Rosie just told me that she puts them. They're in your bathroom. Mm. So yeah, I put them on a. I put four items on a post-it note. One, in, One's in my bathroom, one's um, on the fridge in my kitchen, and one's by my bed. So I put four things on my fridge, and uh, four things on these post-it notes, and one of them is um, drink a glass of water, make a meal, take a walk, and have a shower. But those, I think, are the four most important, and I think to start with, water. You mm-hmm. don't realise how much water affects your brain mm-hmm. and how much uh, dehydration can... It just knocks you. The hippiest I get is when I start talking about water because for me, there's something about like, it's something soothing about pouring yourself a glass of water, whether that's from the tap or like from a jug. And there's something equally soothing to me about sitting by the sea, you know, oh, like, yeah. like oh having gosh. that like bre- teach you how to breathe and calm you down. So water for me has always been something kind of comforting. Um, so I think it's as much like the process of pouring it and taking the time to like, do something for yourself that will, like, without question, nourish you and, you know, be good for you. Oh, Um, so true. As well as just hydrating, (laughs) which is important, especially in winter. When I'm not being productive, it's probably because I'm dehydrated. Oh, really? Oh, there's such an association there. And it took me until my third year of uni to really realise that if I had a glass of water, I felt so much better instantly. Oh, that's great. I mean, like, not all sadness manifests itself in crying, but if you have been crying a lot, there is something so yeah. dehydrating about that. Oh yeah, and, and the headaches. Oh gosh, oh, yeah. Crying addicts are the worst. So worst. <laughs> <laughs> this is like just depressed people things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what I found really useful recently, and it's making a meal, as mm-hmm. you said, making food, eating anything. Mm-hmm. For some reason, will lift my mood, and I guess it's because you're getting nutrients. Your body, I don't know. There's some something happens you were saying with with your mood with water and how uh you, you didn't realize how you're rehydrated i don't really realize when i'm hungry mm. um so i often will feel really grumpy and i'll feel really fatigued and i'll feel just really unable to do anything and then i'm like well i guess i'll just stay in bed all day and i guess i'm not seeing the world today yeah. but if i take literally five seconds to run and get a banana or run and do something basic, then I'll have the energy to make myself a bigger breakfast or a bigger meal at that point. Um, So that's another thing I'd say is like, always try and keep basics around that you can like grab and snag, whether that's, uh, you know, bananas, or sometimes even that can be hard to make sure you always have. So things like those little snack bars, like Lara bars in the US. Oh Oh my God, Lara bars are heavenly. Yeah, I love Lara bars. What's your favorite Lara bar? Oh, they do a chocolate chip yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. Like a chocolate chip cookie one? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's really I good. I think that actually the peanut butter chocolate chip is my favourite. Oh. Yeah, but the chocolate chip one is also great. But what kind of meals do you make when you're just like anything? So I always have frozen piss breads mm. in the freezer because you can defrost them under the grill or in your toaster really fast. Put some peanut butter on them. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Great food. I think having a cup of tea, maybe with a bit of sugar in it, and... If you drink milk, some milk. Mm-hmm. Because then you really get, I don't know, you're getting something in you even if you feel physically unable to eat. It's just good for the soul as well. And I think for, especially for those of us who grew up in tea-consuming households, it is often just associated with comfort and yes. care. And whether that's care, someone else making you a cup of tea or you making it for yourself as well. Yeah. I'm worth taking time for. I'm worth feeding. I'm worth yeah. watering. I'm worth this cup of tea. Yeah. And you kind of, it's a fake it till you make it situation. You stop believing it. I definitely had a moment a couple of months ago where I stood in the shower and I was like, I am going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> showers are like, showers are so like, the, the water just pounds down on you. And you're like, yeah. So I've made a little notes list about um, the things that I think are emergency self-care. Self-care. 
Shower. Try not to ferment in your own sweat. Oh yeah, don't ferment. Because honestly, you feel so much worse when you don't shower. It doesn't mean you have to wash your hair. It doesn't mean you have to like do whatever else it is you do in the shower. But even like I found recently, I've I've grown to love just like the quick dip. I was gonna say on top of the shower, brushing your teeth. Mm, yes. Brush your teeth. It helps. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, there's an amount of swaddling you have to do to yourself when you feel sad. But something about like cleaning your teeth and having a shower is about just polishing what's there. Oh yeah. It's rather than about like covering what you don't like. I mean, if you do have a bed day, and I, I've had a bed day from time to time, um, or even if you're just, you have a day where you've done all the things, but you want to just stay inside. Something that I really love doing that I was just telling Lucy was uh, I listen to the Harry Potter audiobooks nonstop, no matter what mood I'm in. So it's this nice constant. And same with the West Wing. I watch the West Wing non-stop no matter what mood I'm in. It's something familiar and it makes my space feel familiar and safe. And like, I know the stories, I know the voices, I know the inflections. That's really um, nice. So yeah, if there's something familiar to you, even if that's like a favourite song, a favourite album, it doesn't necessarily have to make you feel happy. But if it does, then that's helpful too. It's again the comforting thing, isn't it? Yeah. When I was feeling really down a couple of months ago, um, my housemate recommended my dad wrote a porno podcast. Mm-hmm. And I, that was the only time I smiled that whole like week or two weeks I was feeling really down and it just gets you out of your head and into another place. Perfect distraction just listening to a bad porno and people commenting over it. Spend time with your friends. I like my friends. I like you But if your friends don't live in the same country as you, then Skype your friends. Yes, or Facebook message your friends. Or Facebook message your friends. Or send a letter. Write a letter to your friends. Write a letter to your friends. Write a letter to your friends. And keep stamps around in envelopes for those days that you don't want to go and get an envelope. Or a stamp. And keep your addresses close. (laughs) But your enemies closer. Yeah, Yeah, no, I'm totally about the uh, seeing friends. I'm... Oh, me too. I'm really lucky that we have freelance friends who you can just Freelance friends. FFs. Yeah. (laughs) BFFs. BFFs and FFs. (laughs) So my best freelance friends and I. (laughs) But I can just give people a call if I'm really, really bad. Yeah. I give someone a call. I'm like, hey, what are you doing today? Let me do that thing around you. Yeah. Like, I, do, I can just exist in a house while they work. That doesn't matter. But being around people. I go to work in an office and um, so that, like, is a bit of a different a different situation. But I still try to make time there for being able to say, like, well, today's going to be a difficult day. So on my lunch break, I'm going to go make sure I have a meal or go for a 10-minute walk around the block. And then on that 10-minute walk around the block, I'm going to FaceTime audio call one of my friends in the UK. Yeah. Or I'm going to uh, make sure I am open and honest with at least one of my friends today about how I'm feeling. Or like just like setting myself little things then for that day. Yeah, that um, open and honest thing is so true as well. I think when you tell one person how you're feeling, you don't necessarily have to tell the world, but that one person lifts a certain burden. Yes. At least I find that. I agree. I'm not feeling good because of this. I don't know when it will pass, mm-hmm. but I've acknowledged that I feel that way right now. That for me is super beneficial. Then give them a call. Like this. Like this. But not on a banana phone. On a real phone. <laughs> Do you remember the banana phone song? Banana phone. Boop, 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 boop. I'm wearing my jumper inside out and I just <laughs> There was a final thing. So therapy. we called our friends. Therapy. Therapy. Get therapy. Therapy. My thing is always if you've been to a therapist and you're like, that therapist was stupid and it wasn't helpful, find another fa- therapist, find another counsellor, find another person you can go to whose job it is professionally to talk about your brain and your yeah. feelings. And if you're feeling bad enough that you're watching this video, chances are you benefit from therapy. And it's hard sometimes because I know, especially in the UK, like with the NHS, you have to get a certain level of like approval and they have priority lists and so on. But if you look around, you can often find sliding scale. So my first therapist, my first proper, proper therapist that I went to, um, that I consider a good therapist, had a sliding scale which went down to five pounds a session. That's amazing. And then my most recent therapist while I was still living in the UK had a sliding scale that went down to 20 pounds a session, which is obviously four times as much, but extremely good value considering the upper end of her sliding scale was something like 250 pounds a session. Yeah. So it just, they take into account your income, they take into account your situation. I mean, it does take a lot of effort to look into that stuff. I accept it, but it's so worth it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and I mean, every therapist that I spoke to um, said, yeah, like, name your price within reason. I have, you know, so many clients that pay less than my rate mm-hmm. and so many clients that pay my rate. And then just 
the agreement kind of was, if your financial situation changes, let me know. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. if I'm earning more, I'll happily pay more because I, I see it as invaluable. I agree. I think that it's like, it's as basic health care to me as it is renewing my inhalers or, you know, buying toothpaste. It's yeah. like buying toothpaste. That's a very good one. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Look after yourself. Yeah, self-care, banana phone. Anyway, enough of the shenanigans. We made a video on Rosianna's channel. I don't know what it is yet. But Who knows? Needs your eye. Great. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. And so will Rosianna in her video that we did with her. Yay! Ah. Bye. Bye. Two thousand six, baby. February. Eleven years. Fourth. February fourth. Mm. Do you know what? My anniversary is coming up. It's January sometime. January nice. eighteenth. That'll be seven years. Oh my god. Seven years. It's your Deathly Hallows year. Oh god. Don't say that. Yeah. It's a bit concerning. Well, sometimes it turns out all right.